I'm loving this summer worship already. So we've been in this book, of The Magnificent Story. We gave out copies at Easter. Uh, again, some of you have them and maybe have already finished reading it. Maybe some of you haven't even ever heard of this uh, book before. So uh, it's a great book to get off of Amazon. It would be a great summer read. Uh, we're in Chapter 8 today, and we're looking at this idea of making all things new. Um, when it comes to the, th- the thoughts about the end of the world, oftentimes uh, there doesn't seem like there would be a lot of beauty, goodness, and truth uh, to that. So um, this morning... Um, as we think about this idea of uh, uh, uncovering this, this uh, gospel of beauty, goodness, and truth, we're going to look at how God is going to make, be making all things new, making all things new. And as God makes all things new, it's always going to be all beauty, all goodness, all truth. All beauty, all goodness, all truth. Let's say those words together. All beauty, all goodness, all truth. But... We know that there is other stories in our world. And oftentimes uh, when we hear about the end of the world, it's this idea of repent. The end is near. I know. I mean, that excites you when you start hearing about uh, repent. The end of is near. Uh, Sometimes mothers and fathers with well intentions. In many of the churches, you know, they're, they're wanting to follow Jesus, and they're wanting their children to follow Jesus. And so sometimes when their children are maybe six, seven, maybe even five years old, they have a conversation with their little uh, child. So, honey, do you want to go to a really, really nice place someday when you die and to be there with mommy and daddy forever? Or do you want to go to a place where it's always dark and you'll never see mommy and daddy again? Well, if you just believe in Jesus and ask Jesus into your heart, and what the parents effectively just did is scared the out of their children. Instead of showing heaven as something that is flowing with beauty, goodness, and truth. So uh, as we think about this idea of beauty, goodness, and truth today, well, I want us to uh, go back to a song that uh, was one of the early Christian music songs, and it's uh, I Wish We'd All Been Ready. Um, it was written in 1970 by Larry Norman. Is anybody a Larry Norman fan in the house besides myself? I didn't think so. Uh, he was one of the pioneers in what we'd call Christian rock. It's why we are able to do the kind of music and the kind of songs we are able to do. He was one that took it, uh, a lot of criticism from the church that was still singing the hymns and singing the organ. And, you know, you can't worship Jesus with gu- guitars and keyboards and, and rock and roll drums and that. Um, so he wrote this song uh, based on what we're going to call a false narrative, a scary ending kind of story. Some of you, um, uh, DC Talk made a remix of it in the 1990s. How many DC Talk people are out there? There's a few of you. Again, they've all broken up. Uh, Toby Mack, who was one of the original DC Talks, he'll be at Life Fest again this uh, year. I want to read to you the lyrics. And again, you can go on uh, online, go to YouTube or something. You can uh, look up this song. You can read the song or hear the song uh, actually performed by uh, Larry Norman uh, way back when. I got to see him in concert when we were living in Fort Wayne years and years and years ago. Here's, here's the, the words of the song. Again, based on what we're going to call false nar- narrative, but we'll see how they get it from the Bible. Life was filled with guns and war, and all of us got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready. The children died, the days grew cold, a piece of bread could buy a bag of gold. I wish we could all, we'd all been ready. And here's the chorus. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come, and you've been left behind. Here's the uh, second verse, and again, we're going to see how it's going to tie into a scripture verse, but again, how they misunderstand and, and misinterpret the scripture verse. A man and wife asleep in bed. She hears a noise and turns her head. He's gone. I wish we'd all been ready. Two men walking up a hill. One disappears and one's left standing still. I wish we'd all been ready. Again, the, the, it says, the, the father spoke, the demons dying. How could you have been so blind? I hope we'll all be ready. You've been left behind. 
And the chorus happens a number of times. You've been left behind. So this morning what we're talking about is this idea that um, there's some false narratives, some false stories out there. And again, the author in chapter 8 uh, calls these kind of scary stories, scary ending kind of stories. So you've, we've all heard of the rapture. We've all heard of something like 666, again, meant to you know, uh, spark a fear in us. This whole idea of left behind. And if we're followers of Jesus, we won't be left behind. We're going to have the great escape. We're going to get away from this troubled, crazy world. Again, oftentimes there's pictures in pop culture of heaven being kind of this fluffy place where you just kind of float around in clouds and you wear a diaper and you play a golden harp. There's a lot of that in, in our... And, and oftentimes this oh, aspect of that fluffy heaven, heaven is that well, as long as you make it, who cares about those that get left behind? As long as you make it, as long as you know the truth, as long as you following Jesus, who cares about those other people. Again, this is the idea of the scary ending story. The author talks about in chapter 8 that the, the, this kind of story comes from Matthew chapter 24. And here's what the Larry Norman just sang about as he wrote this song, the verses. It says, two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. But again, when you look at the whole context, and as the author describes in chapter 8, that's not what uh, Jesus is talking about there. What he's talking about there is, is there going to be this glory of beauty, goodness, and truth that we're getting swept up into. That's the focus of it, and he's just coming one more time. Many of the scary ending stories say he comes and then there's a bunch of trouble that happens, but some will you know, find their way and they won't be left behind in the second coming, but the Bible is pretty clear. The other place where they get this is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Again, these are words that are just flowing with so much beauty, goodness, and truth. They we, we get twisted. So it says this, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who do not have, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Again, just this biblical imagery of death. There's not a permanence. When we're in Jesus, when we're following this Jesus, when we die, we fall asleep, and he's going to come and wake us up. No one else can wake us up. You can't wake your own self up once you fall asleep in death. But Jesus can take your hand and say, little boy, time to get up, little girl, time to get up. And the beauty, goodness, and truth of that, that's what Jesus wants for all of us. And then it goes on and says, for this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. Again, it's not about us, but if we're still alive when the Lord comes, everyone that is followers of Jesus, they're going to get caught up in that moment. And then all those that were previously followers of Jesus that have fallen asleep, he's going to wake up and we're all going to be in this glory. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command with the voice of the archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Oh, the beauty of that. The goodness and the truth. The beauty and the goodness and the truth of the trumpet sound. Not something that would scare us, but something that would just lift our hearts and our minds and our souls to the wonder of who this Jesus is. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Oh, it's horrible that so many in the church can take these words and make them anything but beauty and good and true. So beauty, goodness, and truth. When God makes all things new, when God makes all things new, 
in each one of our hearts. We need that as this month of June begins. For all of us here. We know we live in a culture surrounded by people that are just like us, really nice people. I mean, they're obeying the laws. They mow their grass. They go off to work. They're getting along as husband and wife. They're getting along with their children as the children go through all their phases. But because life in general is mostly going pretty well, they're not against Jesus, but they're not following him either. They don't need this church thing. They don't need the drama that sometimes happens in churches. They don't need the scary ending story. But if we can start introducing them to a story that's always flowing with beauty, goodness, and truth in a world where we know that wherever Jesus is putting beauty, the devil's coming on with some ugliness. Wherever Jesus wants goodness, the devil comes along and puts bad stuff. Wherever Jesus comes along and wants truth, the devil comes and has craftily disguised lies that we oftentimes buy into. And some of us in this room, we do that. Sometimes we're more American than a follower of Jesus. America, as amazing as it is, there's an underbelly. America, as good as it is, man, is there some bad. One of the books I read over the last number of months after Martin Luther King heard uh, the, the holiday back in January, I heard a book recommendation and I read the book. What has happened and what continues to happen to our black brothers and sisters Man, do we need the mercy of Jesus. When we think of the lies that the devil is telling us, as long as you're good, don't have to worry about following Jesus, don't have to worry about, don't have to worry about giving 10%. Every once in a while, just do a dollar here or a few dollars here because there's some cause that sparks your heart. Then when you die, oh, Jesus is just going to say, oh, come on in. That's a lie. And whenever there's a lie, there's an ugliness and something so bad. Jesus wants us to realize that there is this beauty, goodness, and truth. The Bible talks about a new heaven and a new earth. Again, we have a glorious summer day, but it's hard to even imagine what that new heaven and new earth is going to be like. And then in the chapter, here in chapter 8, it talks about this idea of the kingdom of God. Again, we pray over and over in the Lord's Prayer, the kingdom twice. Thy kingdom come, and then we end it with the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. Jesus teaches about the kingdom right before he ascends up into heaven. This kingdom of God, the with God life together. The with God life together is beauty, goodness, in truth, if you want to do a not with God life, man, you're going to have to fight to keep things beautiful. You're going to have to fight against that what is bad. You're going to have to fight against that which is lies. But with the God, the with God life together, he holds us. And he brings beauty over and over when we've done something ugly. I do ugly. You do ugly. But Jesus says, let me restore you back to beauty. 
I do bad, you do bad. Here's some goodness. It's my goodness, but I want you to have it. I want to share this with you. I don't want to just keep it to myself. I want it to be with you. He's got truth for us. Even when we're surrounded by all kinds of lies and sometimes when we believe the lies that we tell ourselves. Here's my truth. We'll hold you in my truth. And when Jesus gives us the truth, he'll set us free. Because every lie that we believe, every lie we think that we can somehow, it will tie us. We see it all around us. So Jesus wants to hold us with this beauty, goodness, and truth, Jesus. When I look at Jesus, as we look at Jesus this summer, as we think about this Jesus over and over and over again, he's just flowing with beauty, goodness, and truth. So imagine what beauty, goodness, and truth, imagine what beauty, goodness, and truth Jesus has for us. Again, chapter 8 of this magnificent story, it's got this phrase, all will end well. All will end well. Can you say those four words with me, please? All will end well. You die in your sleep, all will end well. You die with your body suffering from cancer, suffering from dementia, suffering from whatever it is that happens to us in the end, all will end well. All will end well. Not because of how we lived, but because of how Jesus has taken a hold of us. All will end well. It's a gift. I'm not grabbing onto it. I can't grab on it and hold on to it. But it's a gift. And it keeps bringing me back and bringing you back. All will end well. It's a gift. So uh, in Revelation chapter 22, instead of a scary ending story, well, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life bright as a crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it. And his servants will worship him. Just a flow of beauty, goodness, and truth. And they will see his face. Not just me seeing his face. Not just you seeing his face. Not just someone who's already gone before you seeing his face. But all of us seeing his face. His name will be on their foreheads. I don't get that one. It sounds pretty weird, but I don't know. It's gonna, it will be beautiful, good, and true. Night will be no more. No ugly in the night. No bad in the night. No lies in the night. And they will need no light of lamp or the sun. Imagine. For the Lord their God will be their light. And they will reign forever and ever. Beauty, goodness, and truth. So that's kind of, but here's a, something that maybe we can bite into a little bit more from the Old Testament prophet of Isaiah. 700 years before the time of Jesus, he was imagining this new heaven, this new earth. And by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, these words are recorded for us in Isaiah 25. Here's this picture. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a 
feast of rich food, including smoked meat. A feast of well-aged wine. You don't have to worry about the alcohol content. You don't have to worry about abusing it. It's going to be just wine of beauty, goodness, and truth. can't imagine how flavorful it's going to be by God's gift. Of rich food full of marrow and of aged wine, well refined, and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord spoken. And when the Lord speaks, there's beauty, goodness, and truth. And it will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. We've waited for him. And there was so much ugly, so much bad, and so many lies. Maybe someday we'll say we had a summer of hope in 2018 that did things that I never even expected or anticipated. But we waited for him that he might save us because anything that you think will save you besides Jesus is a lie. And it's going to go ugly and it's going to go bad. But with Jesus. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So again, if you're still reading along in the book in that, uh, you've got a soul training exercise this week, or you can have a soul training exercise just today with taste. Taste. And when something flavorful hits your sensors, Next week, we're going to finish the book with uh, Living in the Magnificent Way. But even after we finish the book, well, we're going to be looking at flowing in beauty and goodness and truth. Maybe some of you saw the recent movie, I Can Only Imagine, that was uh, made on the life of Bart Millard, the lead singer of Mercy Me. We know that the song I Can Only Imagine came out uh, years ago, over a decade ago. But yet, every time you still hear this song, the beauty of the music, the beauty of the lyrics, there's something about this song that, again, swept into people's hearts, whether they were followers of Jesus or not following Jesus at all, because there was just some beauty and goodness and truth about the flow of this song, because it asks more questions. But all the questions lead you to a place of beauty, goodness, and truth. And you keep getting drawn into that song. Every time I hear this song, and just so you know, we're not going to sing it after this. But you can, again, go to YouTube or maybe it's on your phone or somewhere. You can listen to it. We're going to sing another song that's going to tie into this book of Revelation. And uh, it's going to be beauty, good, and true. But here's the words of, I can only imagine. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Then it goes into this amazing chorus, surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Mm. Well, I dance for you, Jesus, and some of you guys, especially some of you men, uh, that's not beauty, goodness, and truth. But you don't get to decide. That's why I love the question. Will I not be able to stop myself from dancing? Because I'm in your presence. Because it's not about thinking of ourselves at that point. It's about being in the presence of Jesus. 
When you're in the presence of Jesus, you want to be out of control of yourself because of the beauty, goodness, and truth that you're there with Jesus. Will I dance for you, Jesus, or again for some of us, or in awe of you, just be still. I'm trying to take it all in and we can't. Will I stand in your presence or to my knees? Will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. How many times has that song touched your hearts and your minds and your souls already? And how can it touch our souls, our hearts and our minds this morning? There is a beauty and a goodness and a truth to when our last day comes. There's none of us in this room that's going to see the year 3,000. But we don't need to see the year 3,000. Because we'll be being with Jesus way past the year 3,000 and into 30,000 and into 50,000. That's who our Jesus is. When we realize that, His beauty, His goodness, His truth, well, we start using our hands in an open way. Instead of trying to hold on to what we think will make our lives work. Don't keep following the American lie. It's ugly. It's bad. It's deceptive. Follow this Jesus. goodness, his beauty, and his truth. So we're going to start ending uh, messages in a different way. Um, and this might be weird, and, uh, and we can talk about it later, Nat. But you know how many times you clap at the end of, mess- of songs? Well, I want to say New Hope to start clapping at the end of messages. Not because I'm such an amazing preacher, I'm thinking more of the second pastor when he comes so that you really will be able to encourage him when he starts <laughs> preaching. But I think it wouldn't be a bad thing to uh, clap for the beauty, the goodness, and truth of Jesus. Mm. So now let's stand, pray, and sing one more song that will glow with this beauty, goodness, and truth of Jesus. So Lord Jesus, thank you for the wonder of your word. Thank you for the wonder of the story of the ending of our lives that is flowing with beauty, goodness, and truth because of you. Jesus, keep helping us. This is not a one-time thing. We're going to have to see you over and over uncovering this gospel of beauty, goodness, and truth. So be with us, Jesus, and hold us now. We pray it in your name. And all said...